Hi, so a few months ago, I'd never welded anything in my life. Then I got hold of this thing. It's an Xcore MMA 300E, and it's a modern welding machine. Actually, it's amazing. It's really quite light. If you try to do that on an older machine, you probably break your finger. So it's an awesome thing, an IGBT power supply, basically. Now, all you really do is take these couple of wires that are supplied, plug one in here, one in here, stick one of those in the clamp and poke at your metal until you get an arc. And essentially, that's all there is to it. I mean, sure enough, you're not going to make the most beautiful weld. But that doesn't really matter. For me, all I was interested in is sticking two bits of metal together in a way that they wouldn't break apart. And that does a beautiful job of that. After a bit, you get much better at it, of course, because welding really is four things. That's what you need. You need the equipment, which is right here. You need a space to do it in, which is pretty much essential. You need practice. And then what I think is the biggest thing, to get over the fear of doing it. Because the minute you poke your metal with that, a massive arc comes off and it's scary. So after a little bit of practice and getting in there and doing it, you get over that fear. And then your welds get better and better. But the essential things are getting over the fear, finding a space to do it in, getting hold of some of this equipment so you can do it, and then practice. And suddenly, a whole world opens up of things you wouldn't have thought of before. And that's exactly what happened to me. Now, there's lots of arguments about these things. Um, do you put the clamp in here or here, the plus or the minus? How much of this do you put on it? To be honest, it really doesn't matter. You stick them in the positive or the negative or the opposite way around and there are supposed to be tweaks to it. I've not noticed it. So I always put this clamp in the negative and this one in the positive and I've never changed it. I don't doubt in years to come when I get proficient at it and get to be an actual welder instead of some guy randomly gluing things together, I'll worry about it. But to get going, doesn't matter in the least. This bit you twiddle up and down depending on how the thing sticks. If it sticks, it's too low, turn it up a bit. Normally it's quite low on a thin one and quite high on a thick one and it depends on the thickness of your metal. But it isn't complicated. There's a really simple front, it's really obvious what to do. Now, in terms of cost, this thing was about 100 quid. It comes with a little face mask that to be honest is rubbish. So I bought this thing which cost me 20 quid and this auto darkens. That means you just stick it on your head, you can see what you're doing, and when you strike that scary arc, it automatically uh, cuts out the UV for you. The other essential thing are a pair of really good gloves. These are some leather gloves, again, they were 20 quid, so we're talking about 140 quid, and you can set yourself up. Now, this thing has a ton of advantages. People talk about MIG welding and all kinds of stuff, but this thing itself, loads of advantages. It's cheap. It's portable, you can do it anywhere. You can get a job, however ugly, out of it from a stick on your first try. So a ton of advantages. However, it also has a ton of disadvantages. It can only do steel, for instance. It can only do iron, ferrous metals. Can't do anything else with it. So if you want to do something like aluminium, or you want to get a nice, beautiful job, or you want to do a thin sheet materials, because this will burn right the way through a bit of thin sheet, it's no good. But for lots of jobs, it's really good. However, I think it's a kind of a truism, isn't it? That for every mother's son, the boy is the most handsome, and for every father's daughter, then the girl is the most clever. For every man, his wife is the most perfect. And the same is true for me. My wife is absolutely wonderful. Love her to bits, and I don't know how the hell she puts up with me. But she's caring, considerate, kind, and thinks about the kind of things I do and what I would like. Because today is my birthday. And she got me this. This is a Roa welding machine, MIG 250 MI. And we're gonna get it out the box. And the box is really quite beautiful. Box always tells you something about the contents, eh? To a degree, if the box is too pretty, very often the contents are rubbish. But this is a nice box. It's sturdy, it's well made as a box, and it gives me hope for what's in there. So let's get what's in there out. There it is. Isn't it a beautiful thing? I hope you have a look at the front. The front has an awful lot more controls on it and an awful lot more bits and pieces that you can plug things into. So it immediately looks much more scary than the thing we just looked at. The thing we just looked at, it's really plug and play. This, we're obviously going to have to find out how to use it and that's a real worry. But 
let's find out how to use it because you invariably want to travel that path that everybody wants to travel. First off, you do just want to stick things together. Later on, you do want to make them more beautiful and then you want to be able to weld things that aren't just steel, big old lumps of aluminium. So I'm walking the same path everybody else has walked before me and I know that. Now this thing was uh, 340 pounds. So it's not the cheapest machine. It's not the most expensive machine, but it's certainly a nice machine. In here, if we look at the side, got a little cabinet there where we put our metal spool. There's the feed a bit there where it'll feed out through into my welding head. At the back, we've got the power connection, the gas connection, the on button, and the front bit is the bit to worry about. Now this thing is a multi-purpose machine. So you've got a little toggle switch there, MIG, MMA. MMA is that metal, uh, manual metal arc, remember. It's the same as the little machine that we just looked at. And if we have a look what came with it in the cables, that's our clamp to our earth. And we put that in on the negative, And that's the clamp where we put the stick. So we can put the stick right in there and use that just the way we used the x cord and you flip that toggle onto there and it becomes exactly what the x cord machine was incidentally when it comes to welding mma what you control is the amps and there is the amps toggle there and it says mma a on it and you turn that up and down so you can control the amps in the same way that you did with the x cord and of course the amps will now display so that bit of it no problem at all understanding. We just flip that toggle and we can use it just like the x cord. This bit, the MIG, the MIG, is the new bit and it's the bit that I'm excited about and the bit I have no understanding of whatsoever. Apart from these gas welders. A gas welding actually, MIG stands for metal inert gas, but there's also another gas welding style called metal active gas. Metal inert gas is used for things like aluminium, metal active gas is used for things like steel. And the reason is just cost. Inert gas is just more expensive. So things like argon are much more expensive than something like carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is what you're going to use in MAG, and argons are what you're going to use in MIG. But they both use wire, and what they do is they feed the wire out and blow the gas over to create the right atmosphere. When you're doing metal arc welding, manual metal arc, then that protection is by the flux on the rod. With gas welding, the protection is the gas you're forcing over it. Because this is a chunky old beast, it also needs a gas cylinder. It's not very portable, and you can't use it outside. So these are restrictions on this that the metal manual arc, the MMA welding, doesn't have. But on the plus side of it, you can do much more with it, and it's much neater. So this is something that people are going to want to use. Certainly it's something that I want to use eventually after getting a bit of uh, understanding of stick welding. So we can use it as a stick welder, we can use it as a gas welder. The gas welder, you load up that thing apparently, feed it down this thing, which is our torch, and we press that button, out comes the wire, out comes the gas, and we should be able to weld here for our stone. And it comes with a link cable. The link cable goes into one side here, and then depending whether you're doing MIG or MAG, it clips in there or there. Don't know which. However, this comes to the rescue. It's the operator's manual. But the operator's manual, although it looks quite thick, is in about 20 million languages because it's a European product. The actual bit we are interested in runs the two pages. Those two pages there tell you how to set it up. Once you start breaking down this scary front end, then it starts to become much more understandable. Another curious thing about gas welding is you don't control the amp so much as you control the voltage. And we've got MIG V. So that's the bit that we're going to twiddle to control the voltage, which is going to control the arc for us. Or at least that's my understanding of it. Now, this is a bit like a toy at Christmas, hey? It's an awesome thing, but it doesn't come batteries included, which is a bit of a shame. So there was no MIG welding wire. And I understand that because the wire is going to be dependent on what it is that I want to weld. I mean, clearly if I'm welding steel, I want steel wire. If I'm welding aluminium, I want an aluminium wire. And it also doesn't come with the gas bottle, which is the bit that we need. Now, it is usable straight out of the box, but only as MMA. I have to flip that toggle and use it as a stick welder. To use it as a gas welder, there's a bit more setup required on this. What I need is the wire, a gas bottle, a regulator. 
Once I've got that bottle and regulator, I could feed the gas in and we can give it a go on the gas welding. So I still have to do that, obviously, because today is my birthday. This is what I got from my beautiful, beautiful, wonderful, marvellous, fantastic wife as my present. And I'm going to have to set it up because I remember I said you needed somewhere to do this. Well, clearly, this thing, it's pretty chunky. It's quite heavy. It's a lot heavier than the x -Cort. It does need a massive gas bottle to go with it, so it's not portable, and it's going to need a space to live. So I've got to get a space to live, I've got to get some gas, I've got to get a regulator, and I've got to get some wire. In the meantime, I'll be using it as a stick welder, obviously. When I get that set up, what I'll do is run through that setup, and we'll do some practice welds. Now, I am by no means a welder, okay? I'm just a guy giving things a go and quite happy to try it and quite happy to poke a bit of metal and create a massive arc. Love it, actually, love it. But it is something that I think is incredibly useful to have and incredibly useful to be able to do just because it opens up a world of possibilities. Now, obviously I'm going to be using this, and I'm obviously going to be doing some videos where we're welding some of that. But you have to remember, like I say, six months ago, I couldn't do any of this. Now, I'm able to do it to a degree. I suspect in about 10 years, I might actually be good at it. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. We're doing more on this, and thank you very much for watching.